In this video, I'm going to be talking about cellular respiration. You probably already know that humans need food and oxygen to survive, as do most living organisms. You've also probably heard people describe breathing using the word respiration. If that's the case, you're already doing pretty well. These facts have a lot to do with today's topic. Essentially, cellular respiration is the name given to the process that all living organisms use to unlock the energy that's stored in their food as chemical energy. There are two different types of cellular respiration, and we call these aerobic and anaerobic respiration. The two types are pretty similar. They both work by breaking apart the chemical bonds in glucose to release energy, and they both use the energy to make a substance called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP for short. There are a couple of key differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration which I'll go over later, but for now all you need to know is that the main difference between them is that aerobic respiration requires oxygen and anaerobic respiration doesn't. I'm going to start by explaining aerobic respiration since it's a little bit simpler. The word equation for aerobic respiration is glucose plus oxygen using enzymes results in carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. We can't live without food or oxygen, and we can easily see why from this equation. Oxygen and food in the form of glucose are the two ingredients in aerobic respiration. We can also see from this equation why our breath contains moisture and carbon dioxide, since both water and CO2 are byproducts of aerobic respiration. If the word equation for aerobic respiration looks familiar to you, you shouldn't be too surprised. It's almost the exact opposite of the word equation for photosynthesis, which I've talked about in the last video. The ingredients of photosynthesis are the byproducts of aerobic respiration and vice versa. The enzymes that are indicated in the equation are located in the mitochondria that are found in the cells of most living organisms. If you remember, plants carry out photosynthesis in organelles called chloroplasts because this is where the chlorophyll that's required for photosynthesis is located. In the same way, aerobic respiration takes place in organelles called mitochondria because they contain certain enzymes that are necessary for aerobic respiration. Let's move on now to anaerobic respiration. There are actually a couple of different equations for anaerobic respiration, depending on the type of organism in which it occurs. We'll start by looking at the equation for anaerobic respiration in people and animals. You can see from this equation that there's only one ingredient for anaerobic respiration, and that's glucose. As I said earlier, the main difference between aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration is that anaerobic respiration doesn't require oxygen. That can be really useful at times. If you're running really fast, your breathing rate may not be fast enough to meet your body's increased need for oxygen, but the muscle cells in your body can use anaerobic respiration to get the energy they need without oxygen. Of course, with the good comes the bad. The good is that the chemical reaction for anaerobic respiration is quicker and doesn't require oxygen, so it's good for a quick energy boost. The bad is that the chemical reaction doesn't release anywhere near as much energy, and instead of producing carbon dioxide and water, it produces lactic acid. A buildup of lactic acid in your muscles can lead to cramps and burning, and this is why your muscles hurt when you exercise really hard. The buildup of lactic acid is called an oxygen debt, and that's because your body needs oxygen to break it down into less harmful substances. This is why even after you stop running, you're still panting for a while and have a rapid heartbeat your body's trying to get the extra oxygen it needs to get rid of the lactic acid and pay off the oxygen debt. Let's move on now and look at the equation for anaerobic respiration in plants, yeasts and bacteria. The enzymes that these organisms use for anaerobic respiration are different to the ones in animal cells and they rearrange the atoms in glucose in a slightly different way. Instead of producing lactic acid, we end up with carbon dioxide and ethanol, which is a type of alcohol. This type of anaerobic respiration is also known as fermentation. This is the chemical process that is used to make bread rise, put bubbles in beer and champagne, and to make beer and wine alcoholic. That just about does it for the main points, but I think I'll do a quick recap before I finish. Cellular respiration is how organisms release the energy in their food. There are two types of cellular respiration, aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration requires oxygen and is slow, but it produces a lot of ATP and can go on indefinitely. Anaerobic respiration doesn't require oxygen and occurs quickly, but it doesn't release much energy and can't go on for very long. Aerobic respiration produces carbon dioxide and water, and anaerobic respiration produces lactic acid in animals and carbon dioxide and ethanol in plants, yeasts and bacteria. 